The following is a production of Florida State University's Office of University Communications. Coming up on FSU Headlines, Florida State University's College of Business has a new boss. FSU medical students meet their match on the road to residency. And meet Mr. Long Jump, how one Florida State student athlete keeps his focus on the track and in the lab. Stay tuned for these stories and much, much more. FSU Headlines starts now. Hello and welcome to another edition of FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. And I'm Nora Bertolet. Our top headline this month, Florida State University's College of Business has found its next dean. That's right, Nora, and he's a familiar face in the halls of the College of Business. Michael Hartline has been appointed as the dean of Florida State University's College of Business after an exhaustive national search. Hartline was previously the interim dean of the College of Business, and as interim dean, he played a major part in securing a $100 million gift from Jan Moran and the Jim Moran Foundation to create the Jim Moran School of Entrepreneurship, which will be the largest interdisciplinary entrepreneurship school of its kind in the nation. Hartline's well-suited for the leadership role. He's taught business administration at the college for 15 years. But I will tell you, when I came here, 15 years ago, I knew it was home. There was just something special about FSU. And 15 years is a lot, but frankly, there are a lot of people here that have been at FSU far longer than I have, some 20, 30 years. And I think that's a testament to the great university that we have and the great community we have. Tallahassee is a fantastic place to live. So the, the, to be able to, to be dean of a place that I've been for 15 years, it's been my home, is truly humbling. Uh, and incredibly exciting. Now Mike has a great vision for the college moving forward and that's really important and it fits in really well with our vision for the university. And Dean Hartline officially began his new job on April 1st. Well, speaking of the College of Business, there's a new class of College of Business Hall of Famers being recognized for their work in the business world. This year, the FSU College of Business Hall of Fame inducted four new members, including FSU president and 1965 business administration graduate, John Thrasher. Thrasher is joined by 1976 marketing and, and finance graduate business. and retired bank executive Nan Casper Hillis, as well as Bobby that Jones Jr., who graduated from FSU in 1975 time, with a degree in finance and accounting. Jones is a retired partner of private equity firm Bluff Point Associates. The fourth inductee this year is William Stevenson, who graduated in 1982 with a degree in management and is the CEO and chairman of the financial group Delage Landon International. FSU isn't just recognized for its amazing academic and athletic programs. The Florida State culture in general is being acknowledged as a champion. Insight into Diversity Magazine recently recognized FSU's ability to create and promote a diverse and inclusive campus for its students, faculty, and staff. We were identified as a diversity champion as part of the 92 HEAT Award winners. And so what that means is Insight to Diversity has looked at all the HEAT Award winners and identified those that are at the top tier um, as it pertains to their diversity and inclusion efforts. The publication gives out the award annually based on all aspects of the campus's diversity and inclusion. This recognition as a diversity champion shows FSU is actively committed to creating this culture on its campus day to day. You know, the key is communication, making sure that we all understand that we're not tone deaf uh, to when we see things that are happening on campus. Recently, we had a great event where we had over 600 students show up and had an incredible discussion about their concerns about diversity and inclusiveness and how we, how we deal with that. We're going to do more of that, uh, but this award is a reflection that some of the things that we've been doing are correct, but we maybe need to continue to do more, and we will do more. To learn more about FSU's diversity and inclusion initiatives, visit hr.fsu.edu, then click on the HR Sections link. Good health involves more than a regular check-in with the doctor. Healthy relationships play a big role in life, especially college students, which is why Florida State University gives its students the tools they need to foster those healthy relationships. Florida State recently celebrated Healthy Relationships Week across campus. FSU students in the peer advocacy group Healthy Knowles sponsors the week to open up dialogue about all types of relationships and how to make sure they're healthy for students. 
Healthy Knowles works with extensions of healthy campus organizations like FSU's Victim Advocacy Program and Renew, a peer-to-peer -peer group out of FSU's Counseling Center. But working together towards healthy relationships is really applicable to any organization on campus. In fact, Florida State University received a considerable grant from the Florida Department of Health's Sexual Violence Prevention Program. This has facilitated the launch of the evidence-informed Green Dot Bystander Intervention Program on FSU's campus. The Green Dot organization promotes violence prevention through peer and cultural influence and recognizes that everyone has a role to play in eliminating power-based personal violence. The university held a special event for the launch of the program at the Westcott Plaza where students, faculty, and staff learn to identify ways they can become active bystanders. The launch concluded a week of workshops and events aimed at eliminating power-based violence on campus and in the community. Green Dot is a program that we've rolled out here on campus whose main goal is to create an environment in which the community does not tolerate power-based personal violence and everyone is expected to do their part. We want to create a culture where people feel that they can intervene, that they can speak out, that they can seek services. And when they see a community that supports them in doing that, they'll feel more empowered to do so. Learn more about this initiative at nomore.fsu.edu slash green dot. Well, coming up next on FSU Headlines, matching doctors with hospitals. FSU medical students find out where they're headed after graduation. We are so proud of them. They, they are matching in wonderful programs all over the country. We're very pleased that we were actually able to start some residency programs in the last few years because this year we're keeping 43% of our class in the state. It's time for Med School Match Day. This story and more when FSU Headlines returns in a moment. I will forever bleed garnet and gold and I will forever be here at heart. Florida State is monumental in my academic and professional career, I think. The professors are some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. We've always known that we wanted to go to Florida State. We're going to go to Florida State. FSU helped me so much by giving me all the resources that I could need to succeed. An amazing experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. When you buy a Florida State University license plate, you're not just showing your school spirit. You're supporting students like us. In the lab. In the classroom. And in the library. Putting this tag on your vehicle helps Florida State students achieve their dreams. So show your pride. Purchase an FSU license plate today. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Nora Bertolay. And I'm Dennis Schnitker. At the end of their fourth year of study, medical students throughout the country learn which residency programs they'll join for the next phase of their medical training. Florida State University helps make Match Day, as it's known, a special celebration for its students and their families. In fact, this year's ceremony was out of this world. Take a look. Welcome, young Jedi physicians, to Match Day 2016. The culmination of hard work put into an undergraduate degree, followed by four often grueling years of medical school and making dreams become reality, is whittled down to a few seconds. Open your envelopes. When medical students learn where they will enter residency training this summer. Match day is huge for me because I'll be the first physician in my family. So it's a big day kind of knowing where I'll be able to practice, knowing you actually have a job. So I'm glad to be going to Fort Myers, which is an hour away from home, and I'll be able to work with my community through the family medicine program there. Needless to say, it's a highly anticipated yet nerve wracking moment for students who are surrounded by their family and friends. When you decide to go into medicine, for me it was at a very early age, you start to have all these build up of emotions and you know you deal with the anxiety of where am I going I'm going to be a doctor in a few months I'm going to be taking care of patients primarily responsible on my own so it's kind of like all those feelings all into one which is why FSU's College of Medicine does something a little different than a regular old ceremony <laughs> Oh, 
We know this is a highly stressful event for the students, and we just like to have fun. The good news is they match great places. We're so, so proud of them. Even better news is that we're tracking those students, and they come back to Florida after their residency. So whether FSU's 2016 class of medical students stays here in Florida for their residency program, or ventures into a galaxy far, far away, they've met their match because of the strength, skill, and character instilled in them during their time at Florida State University. The Council on Undergraduate Research recognizes Florida State University as one of the leading institutions in the United States for its emphasis on undergraduate research. And these bright young researchers are able to showcase their hard work during FSU's annual Undergraduate Research Symposium. One of the most critical parts of research is sharing your work with others. It helps students learn that they can use their, their brain power, their intellectual acumen, for the public good. Right? They're not learning just for themselves. They're working and learning through research in order to improve our understanding about an important problem in the world. And we need more people in the world like, like that who have that orientation and can direct their, their intellectual energy to help improve the, the world. So today is the 16th annual Undergraduate Research Symposium. We have over 300 students presenting today, 150 students presented in the morning, then we had a creative lunch hour to showcase some of the artistic work, and then we have another 150 in the afternoon session. It's so exciting to see students from across, across the disciplines, across campus, uh, presenting the research and creative scholarship today. The number of kids that are doing this, the number of research projects, and the depth of these research projects is just, is frankly amazing. This is Samantha Coonan and I'm Haley Curtis. We did examining the influence of childhood victimization. This study focused on 39 women in a minimum security prison. 39 is a decent sample size, but it's not really enough to give conclusive results. But so far with the results that we have, it does indicate that poly victimization plus sexual abuse is more prevalent as a cause rather than poly victimization without sexual abuse in the College of Social Sciences and Public Policy, but that's not necessarily where I want to do my research. I think that social work is really an important topic to learn and understand, so I'm really grateful that I had you know, the ability to learn more about this area. And what's awesome is that everybody comes to learn about new disciplines, new things they didn't know about, uh, and it's just an awesome experience overall for everybody. It's definitely um, eye-opening for a lot of people being like, oh, I can get involved in research at university. I just have to go talk to my professor, see what they're doing, and even though that they may not be in a STEM field, there's still research going on, so they can get involved in that way, and I think that's really cool. It just shows how the quality of students that Florida State's bringing in. These, these students are amazing. They're sophomores, they're, some of them are even freshmen, that are doing amazing, amazing research already. If you consider yourself a techie, then FSU's annual exhibition of all things digital is the place for you. Students at Florida State University give us a glimpse into the future during a one day exhibition of the campus community's latest and greatest ideas and creations. This is Digitech, Digitech 2016. And it's awesome that there's just like this great intersection between creation and academics. You get up over it and then you can fly around and they can, tra can transition back. It's an exposition of students' innovations with technologies. And so we have students from all over campus, at least 12 departments represented here that are showing us the projects that they've been working on that some way include digital technologies. Yeah, it's awesome. As a student, to see each other um, like showcase what we're passionate about is great. And it's great to see it outside of a classroom setting. In the classroom setting, all the students are just sitting down looking forward, but here, students are actually looking at each other and sharing their ideas that they're working on. Higher education is becoming something much more than sitting in lecture hall. Uh, students really need to be engaged in projects, projects that, that they have a part in creating and coming up with the ideas. And that's what the, the spirit of Digitech really is. It's giving students the opportunity to show their ideas and their projects and to create teams around those projects. So we only hope that this type of education will continue to expand across all disciplines at FSU. An FSU student athlete finds success in the sand pit as well as in the chem lab. 
I need to give the United States thing a chance because that's the only place where I can really try and do academics on a really high level and also compete at a really high level. We'll have that story and much, much more when FSU Headlines continues in a moment. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. And I'm Nora Bertolet. Well, spring has officially sprung here at FSU, and that means I'll be spending all my free time on the west side of campus because the baseball and softball diamonds are busy once again. There's nothing like spending a Saturday night under the lights at Mike Martin Field. And Nora, the track and field is also packed with action as the Knowles enjoy the outdoor season there as well. All in all, it's a great time to enjoy sports on campus. And so now we bring in FSU Headlines reporter Mark Vaughn to talk about the spring sports. Mark? Hey guys, it's definitely a fun time of year. The weather is beautiful outside, and that means those baseball and softball games are a must here on campus. On the baseball diamond and the Knowles off to a hot start in ACC play, jumping out to a 7-1 conference record that had the Knowles ranked in the top 10. Looking to keep momentum in league play with some key matchups against Clemson, Notre Dame, and of course Miami toward the end of the regular season. The Knowles using some great play on the mound by Mike Compton and others to keep those scores low and pull out some big wins so far this year. Over to softball and for the first time in 2016, the Florida State Seminoles dropped a conference game as the Knowles and Irish split an ACC double header in the month of April. The loss snapped FSU's winning streak at 22 games, ranking as the fourth longest in school history. It also marked the first loss in ACC play since April 12th of last year. But there's plenty of softball left in this season as the Knowles have games against their normal ACC opponents like Louisville, but also some out of conference play against Auburn. That's going to do it for sports, but remember, you can always keep up to date with all things Seminole Athletics at Seminoles.com. That's going to do it for me. I'll send things back to you. Thanks for that update, Mark. Well, we're going to head back over to the track with FSU Headlines reporter Alexia Gonzalez. She's here to tell us about a student athlete who's committed to be the best on the track and in the lab. Basically, it feels like the perfect jump feels like you popped off of the board and not jumped off of the board. It felt like it came naturally and not you trying to like dunk. You're trying to jump high, you're not trying to jump high, it just happens naturally. Whether it's soaring into a sandpit or leaping into research, student athlete Stefan Britz has championed the skills of discipline, work ethic, and focus. His journey of perseverance and dedication started when he was a teenager in South Africa. In spite of the difficulties of leaving home and the discouragement he faced from family and friends, Stefan listened to his heart and set forth to Tallahassee, Florida. Back home, it was preached to me that it's the, that it's, it's the biggest, um, biggest mistake that I can make in my life to come over here to the United States. But back home, they're very narrow-minded and only thinking about track and field. What they don't get is that after you're 30 or 35, you're not going to be doing track and field anymore, right? You, you need something to go back on that, and uh, that's where the academics come in. So I did not make the single choice of coming here to just be able to be good in track and field. I came here to be successful and um, to provide for myself one day and grow as an individual. Stefan's enthusiasm for chemistry would ultimately lead him to being one of about 30 students to be selected into FSU's competitive doctoral program in chemistry. Along with classes, teaching, and training, Stefan is consistently conducting research with assistant professor Justin Kennemer. Day in, day out in grad school is a grind, an investment as he put it. Um, and it can wear on you, and he's got a real good attitude about it all. I mean, he comes in, um, if something doesn't work, he's, he's level-headed about it. We go over it, we talk about it. Beyond the lab, Stefan is preparing for his final outdoor season as an FSU long jumper. Throughout his successful career, Stefan has become a four-time All-American and just recently qualified for the 2016 Indoor Track and Field Championships as a number 12 seed. Among an abundance of awards and accomplishments, Stefan has endured his fair share of setbacks and injuries. It's been a rough road, but it's been an interesting road, um, definitely. And to be able to come back and use my last year and already been jumping as good as I've been jumping in my best year at FSU, 
uh, is tremendous for me, absolutely. So definitely excited, you know, to go out there and compete and uh, just keep stepping up those little steps and keep improving. In the midst of a rigorous academic schedule and demanding training regiment, Stefan embodies the spirit of an unconquered Seminole. His courageous and tenacious will has given him the ability to shoot for the stars, and if he misses, he'll land among the infinite grains of sand. For FSU Headlines, I'm Alexia Gonzalez. Thanks, Alexia, for that report. In our next story, you'll see a mixture of student athletes and the students who aspire to be sports reporters, putting their best foot forward. Take a look at some of the work students like Annie Kane and Maria Aldana are creating to highlight our student athletes while utilizing the professional skills they've developed here at Florida State. The Florida State women's tennis team hosted the second annual Military Appreciation Day on February 20th. The event began with the Marching Chiefs performing the national anthem, and the Color Guard's ceremonial presentation of the flags. This traditional event could not have started without the help of Coach Jennifer Hyde. Having a lot of people close to me and in my life that are ex-military, retired military, um, it just seemed like a, a, a natural thing to, to gravitate towards and kind of creating something that, that stands us out and, um, and, and engages our, our student athletes in something outside of just being tennis players and athletes. You know, from what I'm hearing, no one else does this in the nation and I'm glad that we could be, you know, pioneers for this. We are working to try and welcome our veterans home, not just to Florida State, but home, transition them, uh, and then vault them, if you will, in partnership with them into exciting careers. So they have this exceptional experience and very exciting futures when coupled with their education from Florida State University. This year, the men's team was invited to take part in this special event, serving it up against the Citadel while the women faced off against Navy. It's quite an honor to um, host a military game here at home, uh, just because personally I have a brother who was in the Marines, so it's awesome to be able to do that. I think having FSU be a military-friendly campus is just makes them feel very welcome and, and make them feel like they're a part of something, you know, very big here in FSU. I hope our student athletes really take time to appreciate, you know, the, the freedoms that we have because of the sacrifices of others. And, and I think that that's continuing to grow is just something that's very forefront in their minds, whereas a couple years ago that wasn't the case. Being international, it is different for me, but at the same time, this country has given me so many opportunities, the opportunity to come here and play my sport and study at the same time. I'm just so grateful for everything the military has done for, for this country because it has, this country has given a lot to me back. Challenge coins are a part of military history and are used to prove membership, provide recognition, and enhance morale. So before the athletes displayed their skills on the courts, they showed their gratitude with the exchange of commemorative challenge coins. It's a great moment for sending the coins. Um, you, you get to shake hands with someone that has done so much for this country and it's just a little something to show our gratitude, so I think it's very important. Florida State's Tennis Center is named after Scott Spiker, an FSU grad who was the first American casualty of the first Gulf War. Marking 25 years since his death, his family is here to help honor his memory. It's really a special day for us, so not only are we here for Military Appreciation Day, so to, here to support FSU student athletes, student veterans, but we're also here to make sure my father's remembered and that his legacy goes on. We're so proud to bring them back, so happy to have them involved in this event. And as it continues to grow, I hope they'll be alongside the whole way with us. You know, we salute the family. We want to honor all of the fallen, uh, those that went to Florida State. Uh, we have a, a responsibility to honor them here. Uh, and we do that. And so it is just a great honor to have the tennis facility named after Scott. It is very special and it's hard to believe that it's been 25 years and to see that he's still recognized here, um, it really is special for our whole family and it, it's an emotional day. It's difficult but, but happy at the same time and we're so thankful for that. In addition to hosting the military appreciation event once a year, the women's tennis team also holds quarterly clinics with Florida State student veterans and the military community to create a stronger sense of family. Both the men's and women's teams came out with a win to cap off the unforgettable day. Thanks to Annie and our friends over at Seminole Sports Magazine for that report. 
You know, Dennis, it's hard to believe, but it's been exactly five years since I was one of those student reporters. It's great to see them still producing such great work. And you can check out more work from the students at youtube.com slash FL State Seminoles. And before our current students venture beyond FSU's campus, some take part in a Florida State tradition that still rings true. It's my honor to welcome you to the 10th annual President's Ring Ceremony. Very pleased to be with you for this special occasion tonight. If I could show the ring off every second to everyone I talked to, I would. Um, I'm so proud of Florida State University. Putting the ring on and knowing that I was going to get it and then I'd have it and people would ask me that question, I'm looking forward to that moment, could be more proud of it. It's a way for us to honor students with the ring, so each student receives the ring from the president, has his or her photograph taken. It means a lot to students. It's a time to start celebrating graduation. I pledge to uphold the seminal creed, demonstrate strength, skill, and character, and live the values of this institution now and through all of my future endeavors. I am a true seminal. So place the ring on your finger with the torches and the words facing you. Congratulations, you may be seated. So speaking from my perspective, my experiences at Florida State University truly shaped me into the woman I am today. These beautiful brick buildings and canopy tree walkways don't actually make you who you are. It's the experiences you found yourself in and the people that contributed to those experiences, both the good and the bad, that make you your most authentic self today. It's a moment where we, as a Seminole family, can come together to celebrate all that you have meant to this university these past four years, all that Florida State has meant to you, and all that you will go on to accomplish in the future. It's a, a special thing, always a constant reminder of where you come from as you move to where you're going. The Florida State University class ring is designed to best represent the university with its signature garnet and gold and the university's three torches. It's one of the many events leading up to the end of the year commencement ceremonies and it's a great way for our students to reflect on their time here at FSU. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of FSU Headlines, but you can see more news from Florida State University anytime at Florida State 24-7. It's the official news website of Florida State University, and you can find it online at news.fsu.edu. For Dennis and everyone here at Florida State University, I'm Nora Bertolet. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.